Following as a class given by His Holiness Jaya Pataka Swami Maharaj on June 14, 1981 in Montreal, Canada. The class begins with a reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 19, Text 37. never become devotees. So when I was in Atlanta, I preached to them that you should make other people friends of Krishna. You should do this. You should make one or two people every month to chant one round to come to the temple. That's all right. You stay outside. You don't want to come. That's all right. You stay outside. But you, you, you uh, help this movement in preaching. And because of that, those people have actually become very enthused now. Because it's very difficult for everyone also. In India, we don't want everyone to live in our temple. We, we cannot afford uh, in many places to take on uh, everybody in the temple unless there has a particular already a house ready for them. Unless there's a... Uh, just like now in Mayapur, we, don't have, we have a waiting list to come in for grihastas. Because all the grihasta houses are filled up. Unless there's a particular service that they, they're going to do then it's difficult just to increase the community. So we let them come and then make their villages Krishna conscious. And as we get, build a new house for them, if they want to come in, they can come in. But in one village I saw, we took the head man, he wanted to become, he was so advanced, he wanted to be a devotee. Because he came, the whole village uh, Krishna consciousness went down. Because that one person, he was pushing everyone to come every day for the kirtan to everyday chant. And when he left, then the whole village came down. So now I'm thinking even that in such a case, he should stay until he can train up someone else to take such an initiative. Uh, or just come for a short time, when the people are favorable in that place. Here in the West, in England, the Sankirtan devotees, whenever they meet a favorable person, they collect the name. And then when they have program like a, there's so many cultivation programs. In Sankirtan you get names, people write in. Then if you have a restaurant, the people give names. From Sunday feast you get names. From different type of programs you can pick up uh, names of people who are favorable. And so then you encourage them to, uh, to study our books, to chant. Now with this ISKCON World Review, there's also a nice publication that's being actually geared for this type of program. They're gradually writing it in such a way it can be given to friends of Krishna. Of course, it's not been translated yet into Spanish or French. The English devotees, they print up a, uh, a, a, a little magazine every three months. Raga Pandit, he uses a fortnightly, we have our newspaper called the Hare Krishna News, Sankirtan News, Worldwide News. And one page is only for Namhat preaching, one page is World News, one page is editorial and Prabhupada lecture and different Acharya lecture, and then the other pages, other special features for children and other things. <clears throat> and he gives out a private newsletter to his secretaries, who are the he puts in certain areas, who, if anyone makes advancement, after some time you get people who are more advanced, then he puts them in charge of an area. This is Bhakti Vinod's system. You make a circle. Then in one area you have so many people, then that's called a circle. And then there's circle Senapati, circle commander. Like temple commander, circle commander. He goes and sees how everyone's doing. He's uh, outside, but he's part-time, he goes and sees. And then, over these circle commanders, he has three teams of two. They go by bicycle. They go by bicycle. They go put their bicycle on the train and take it to the area. Then they go rest. They go into the villages by bicycle. Two a, a, a team of two. So three team of six devotee, Upper Bengal, middle and lower for Bengal. And now we've given away Arisa to Tejas Prabhu. In the beginning. 
Raghupada was doing four states. Now Bihar and or Arisa, two states, have been separated. And Tejas and Gorgovinda Swami. And so in, in Orissa they made one man. He was a landowner. He was a son of a king. He has so many properties, hundreds of acres of property. So he and his wife, they took initiation, they're chanting, he has got enough money. He bought a house, renting a house rather, just next to the temple in Bhubaneshwar. Goes and cultivates his land in the harvest time. And then he comes and the rest of the time he's organizing in Orissa, this Namhat. He likes it so much that people should chant, that they should become uh, purified. In London I saw they have a whole meal order developing, mm -hmm. selling beads, pictures, tapes, so many things, developing because of all these friends of Krishna. These are some of the re things I've seen. So I feel that in, in, uh, in America and in Canada, the people have got so many literature, there's so many favorable people. I met one man y yesterday, he was an executive flying with me on the flight, just this, this yesterday flying. And uh, he said, why you came to Krishna Khan, what are you doing? And then he said, do you have other people? And I said, anyone can chant. I said, we are simply like the priest, therefore we wear this, we follow, we shave our head, but we have millions of people in America who are chanting in their home. He said, you can also chant. I can also chant, yes. He said, I gave him back to God. He immediately put it in his uh, case. He didn't want anyone to see, but he was very interested. When I was on television, in, uh, I was, uh, television came to see me in, uh, in Latin America, and uh, I told the, uh, the television... Uh, uh, lady who was, you know, interviewing me, that uh, you can also chant. She says, you don't have to, you can, you can also chant. She said she'd like to be a vegetarian if she knew how to cook as well as the Hare Krishna devotees, if they would teach her. <laughs> she liked the cooking. But I told her, you can chant Hare Krishna in your home and be a Hare Krishna devotee in this way. And then she said, then I, very, very good. If I, if I can still be a television announcer, and uh, also chant, and I will chant. And the woman in Chile, who was uh, elected by the public as the Woman of the Year of 1980, you know they have that, the Woman of the Year? Like it, in most countries they have Man of the Year, Woman of the Year. She was the Woman of the Year. She chants eight rounds a day. And uh, she has so many followers, because she's the clairvoyant, you know. And uh, she predicted that the Pope would be shot about, in, De in December she predicted that. She predicted that Regan would be shot. She, all these things she's predicted. So she's very popular. She's a personal friend of the president there. So she's uh, donating all the wood for the Rathyatra cart. Uh, spontaneously, she heard about Rathyatra, so I want to give the wood. Huh? It's unlimited, you know. What we're doing, I see that uh, the temples, they don't have, once you get the program off the ground, that the people automatically, they, they want to contribute. I told the same thing to our preachers in Calcutta, that you're making a life members, they give the money one time. That's all right. But the real thing is not just to get their money, but to give them Krishna consciousness. You give them Krishna consciousness, and even monetarily, they'll want to do as much service as they can. And sure enough, they, uh, they convinced these people to chant four rounds a day to become Vaishya Rishi. They say that in the previous time there was Raja Rishi. That means the kings were the Rishis also, or the, the saintly people. Now there's no more kings, democracy. So now there's only business people. So the business people, they're the leaders of society. Uh, so you now have to become a busy Rishi or a Vaishya Rishi. And so, in this way, now they have about a hundred Vaishya Rishis. They are vegetarian, chant four rounds, similar to League of Devotees, only it's, it's actually those who are life members and League of Devotee both. That's a Vaishya Rishi. Sudha <laughs> Rishi. Mlacha Rishi, we have all types. <laughs>
In partial expansion of Lord Vishnu, due to the mischievous activities of King Vena, religious principles were almost lost. At that opportune moment, you descended as the incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Indeed, for the protection of religious principles, you have appeared from the body of King Vena. Translation with repetition. Oma is reminding Prithu Maharaj that as an empowered incarnation, he has certain duties and responsibilities to protect religious principles, the devotional service of the Lord. The preaching of the, the Lord's devotional service is not an ordinary thing. It is the most difficult and rare thing to achieve. Pure devotional service or bhakti of the Lord is inconceivably rare. You see. Just as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Rupa Goswami, Eto Brahmandu Bhari Anantu Jivagan Chorasi Lakhu Yoni Te Koraye Brahman. That in this material world there are 84 lakh. That means 8,400,000 species of life. You see. So many unlimited living entities. Tāmadde stāpa jangam dui ved, tirjag jalas tola chor bhi ved. Amongst them, there are those creatures which are moving and those creatures which are non-moving. Moving means animals that's further divided into jala, tijak, jala, stola, uh, chor vived. Uh, tijak means birds, jala means water or aquatics. And the moving on land means animals and humans. Tamad de Manusu Jati Atal Putor. And human beings, they are most rare. Amongst these creatures, human being is very rare. You see. Tamad de Javan Pulinda Bodha Sabhor. And amongst the human beings, there are so many uncivilized human beings. Javanas. Javara means those who are violent, addicted to sense gratification, uh, meat eating, and intoxication. Uh, these are Javanas. Uh, Sabwa means, uh, Pulinda means uncultured, aborigine. Sabwa means hunters. Hmm. And Bodha means those who are impersonalists who are atheistic, have no faith in the personality of Godhead, and therefore are unclean in their internal and external thoughts. So, human species which is actually civilized, it's very rare. Real civilization begins from accepting that satisfying the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the goal of human life and working accordingly. So, amongst people who have accepted this, that Krishna and serving Vishnu is the supreme goal of life, Vedha nishta modde ardhik veda mukhi mane Ved nishit paap kore dharma nahi gane That most of them 
Bedamukhi Mane. They give lip service. Mukhe means mouth. Mane means to accept. They accept by word alone. But dharma nahi gane. They don't consider what is to be done, what is not to be done according to the religious principles. They're accepting by lip service. I am Hindu, I am Muslim, I am Christian. In this way they are professing some, you see, dharma. Of course, Muslim and Christian are technically considered to be the dharmas of the Javanas. But even they we see, they give lip service. But when they are doing their daily life, they don't consider what is to be done and what is not to be done. And even those who are following the Veda, there are so many who give their lip service. Yes, I believe in the Vedas and Krishna. But then when they do their daily life, Obviously, they're not considering what the Vedas say should be done and what they say they should not be done. Still, they are fortunate enough that they are accepting the Vedas. You see. So they are higher than the uncivilized people. Dharmachari madde bahut karmanishtha. But amongst those who accept religion, service to Krishna as the goal, you see, who accept the Vedas. So amongst those religious people, most of the people are karma, nishtha. You know meaning of karma nishtha? Karma nishtha means that they are fruitive workers. They want to work hard from the sweat of their brow and be happy. Uh, you have gone to Vrindavana and Vrindavana you may have seen the donkeys, the uh, burro, asses. There they are used to carry sand, laundry. They'll fill up one donkey, uh, one ass, with huge pile of laundry, so many. Practically it looks like their legs are going to break by overload. How to get them to move? Uh, they beat them, they won't move. So they tie one stick to their back and in front of one of the donkey, the asses, they tie one carrot. You know carrot? One vegetable. And the ass, he thinks that Oh, what a nice treat for me. I will just bite it. But because it's tied to his back, as he goes forward, naturally the carrot also is going forward. So every step he thinks, I'm just one step from getting that vegetable. Now I'll get it. Now I'll get it. Now I'll get it. No, 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 next, 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 here, 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 next, 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 next. And he's going the whole day trying to get that cat. Whole day thinking the next step, the next step. He's so stupid. That's why he's called an ass. Stupid as an ass. The whole day is going thinking the next step, the next step, the next step. You see. No brain. Then at the end of the day, take your carrot, eat. Ah, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Happiness. You see. This is what the material workers they all day they're working. In England, sometimes they're saving up for two years uh, so they can go to Miami for two weeks. Holiday. Uh, vacation. Vacation. Two weeks for two years work. They're thinking, very soon, just there. I almost have enough money. Almost enough. Almost enough. I got it. I got my ticket. 
I walk to Miami. Miami, holiday, fun, bliss. You see. They go down there and they get beat up by some, you see, uh, person. Or they go and sit on the sun and they get all sunburned. Because people in the cold countries, uh, like Montreal, uh, like England, they're more pale color. When they go into the hot weather, like in Miami, they turn red. You see. So you see these British people with their red faces, red arms, uh, and the white mark from their t-shirt. Uh, and the skin is peeling off. Uh, and they've got their carrot. Uh, they're enjoying. You see. So this type of enjoyment that I work hard, and with my money, I'll spend it and enjoy. This is like, you see, this is the karma workers. And the enjoyment is just like enjoying uh, like the ass. It's foolish. They work so hard and not even like one's work. Not even be at, at all happy doing one's work. And simply thinking that in the end, I'll get my money and I'll enjoy. And what happens when they go to enjoy just like the ass? They go to have sex with a female ass. And what happens? They get kicked in the face. This also you can see in India, how they get kicked right in the face. Uh, there are one accepts a materialistic wife, thinking wife will serve me. Uh, but instead, uh, there are so many difficulties that come up. And vice versa. So, these are called karma nishtas. They're very addicted to working hard and getting the result of their work. So if they follow rules and regulations of the Vedas, well, they're at least more advanced than those who are hypocritical or insincere. But this hard work, struggle for existence, there's something higher than that. Koti karmonishtamodde ako gyani sreshto. Amongst millions of such karma kandis, such hard laborers, one person who knows what is the purpose of life, who knows that we are not this body, that this body cannot give us ultimate happiness or ananda. He is a gani and he is topmost. He is the best of all these karmis. Over millions and millions of such karmis. But even amongst millions of such ganis, there's one person who is best of all. Koti gani modde akho. Koti gani modde. Koti Gani Magde Aka Jano Hai Mukto. Out of millions of these Ganis, one liberated soul is rare. One you'll find liberated. Who really has realized, yes, I am not this body, I am eternal. He is very rare. One out of millions of Ganis, those who know I am eternal, who actually have realized it, who have seen the light, one you may find. Koti Mukta Madde Dullava Akko Krishna Bhakta And out of millions of such liberated souls, you will find it rare to find one pure Krishna devotee Krishna Bhakta Niskava Toiv Shanto Mukti Bhakti Siddhi Kami Sakali Oshanto That Krishna devotee, he is desireless. Therefore he is peaceful. He is desireless because he is not desiring liberation. Neither is desiring material sense gratification. 
neither is the desiring mystic powers. The devotee is simply desiring Krishna Seva, service of Krishna. Bhukti Bhukti Siddhi Kami Sokali Oshanto. Those who do desire material happiness through sense gratification, even by religious principles, those who desire to enjoy possession of mystic power, Siddhi, or those who want liberation, they're all agitated in the mind. None of them are peaceful. Therefore, the devotee is topmost. Muktanam apisidhanam narayana parayana prasantatma sudullavam koti swapyamaha mune Out of millions and millions of liberated and perfected souls, the devotee is exceptional, rare. He is always satisfied and happy. So, Maharaj Prithu, King Prithu, his duty as an incarnation is to bring people to that position as devotee. You can see it's the most rare thing. It is the topmost thing. Just like a jewelry store, how many customers they're having? Very few. But the customers they have are big customers. They're very good, solid parties. So Srila Prabhupada, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, that he has gone over the whole world and given out bhakti, given out the path of devotion to the Javana, Purinda, Bodha, Savor, civilized and uncivilized people. To the karmis, ganis, and even liberated souls, he has given Krishna consciousness. That means that this is the sign or symptom of someone empowered by Sri Krishna. Kalikale dharma nama sankirtan Krishna kripa bine nahi tar pravartana In the Kali Yuga, the path of Harinam sankirtan is the Yuga Dharma or the authorized religious principle for the age. No one can distribute that unless specifically empowered by the Lord. Unless one is empowered, it is not possible to give out such a thing. So rare, so difficult to obtain. Because Srila Prabhupada was empowered by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he could plant the seeds of this most rare jewel of life in the hearts of unqualified and qualified people alike. Srila Prabhupada, he advised his disciples, similar to what Lord Brahma has advised him. He said, don't perform any pop. Don't perform any sinful reactions, any sinful activities. And don't perform any punya. Don't perform any pious activities. No sin, no piety. Simply perform pure devotional service to Sri Sri Radha Madhava. Simply cling to the lotus feet 
अपनी ताई गोर ऑफ कोर्स एवरी वन कैन अंडरस्टैंड नॉट टू परफॉर्म सिंह और बैड कर्मा बट नॉट टू परफॉर्म पुनिया नॉट टू परफॉर्म फायरस एक्टिविटी वाई Just like here, Maharaj Pitu, he was performing Mahajaggo, Asamit. But as a result of that, Indra Dev was spreading irreligious principles. So Lord Brahma said, the real thing is to establish the devotional service, enough pious activity. Because now this pious activity is not pleasing to Krishna anymore. Up to now it was pleasing, but now because Indra is causing irreligious principle, so just simply preach pure devotional service, enough jagga for pious work. Someone gives charity, and if he gives to an unqualified person. He will have to get the return sometimes from that person itself. That means man gives charity to a beggar. He may have to become the son of that beggar, and the beggar will take him as son, and by serving him as son, he'll pay off the debt. So if people give charity to unqualified person. They may have to become the son or daughter of the unqualified person. The Vedas also say if one gives charity even to a half-educated brahmana, he gets double, and if he gives to a fully educated brahmana, a vedagya, not not even a vedagya, just someone who is very properly clean brahmana, qualified, but not well educated, but qualified, he gets ten times uh, to a hundred times. In return, his charity. And if someone gives to a Veda guy, someone who knows the Vedas, he gets hundred times what he gives in charity. And if one gives to a Vasudeva, Parayana, to a fully qualified Brahmana. Who has understood the purpose of the Vedas, and who has surrendered to Vasudeva, he gets unlimited times the result. So, when devotees accept charity on behalf of Vasudeva Krishna and give to Krishna, it is giving those people unlimited benefit. Even if they want to enjoy material life, no doubt they can enjoy. But the devotee, he only gives to Narayana. He doesn't want any material piety. Doesn't want any material sinful activity. You see, so this type of consciousness is very rare. Everyone is attached to elevation, going to heaven. No one wants to go beyond swarg. To Vaikuntha, very rare. So Shiva Prabhupad, he was giving out this highest jewel, this most rare jewel. That means that he was specifically empowered. Practically speaking, he was Shakta Vesh, empowered to distribute this message, empowered. Incarnation of the Lord's potency, and this has been confirmed by all great acharyas in India today that know His history. So, if someone accepts devotional service or someone is preaching devotional service effectively, this should not be underestimated. You can, in one day, you can spread how to sell hula hoops. You know hula hoop? What are those plastic hoops? Years ago, they were popular. Hula hoop, yeah. Like that, you can spread so many type of pop song, 
In one day, that will be a hit all over the world. And in five days, that will be finished. And what is the benefit? The Beatles, where are they today? And so on and so forth. Because these things are temporary. But someone gets devotional service, that benefit is eternal. That benefit is eternal. That takes one out of this material world. That devotional creeper grows, 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 breaks through the material universal covering and goes beyond the Brahma Jyoti, beyond the Vaikuntha Lokas and grabs in the lotus feet of Sri Sri Radha Manoharo. This is the divine power. And this potency is being given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his devotees. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so merciful. So we should be very grateful that somehow or another we were pulled by the ear, forced our eyes open by the spiritual master. Not take it lightly. If someone gets this opportunity and then due to bad association fails to perfect himself in this life, he is very unfortunate. So everyone present should be very careful not to be unfortunate in this life, but to finish up their business in this very life. Go back to home, back to Godhead. This jewel of devotional service should be protected. Just like one protects a jewel from thieves, rogues. You should protect the jewel of devotional service. Just like sometimes the prostitute, they will allure the man, come on, come on. And then when they get him in the room, they'll pick his pocket, steal his money, take his jewel and flee off. Like that, some people are saying, come on, criticize, gossip, fault fine, listen to me. They steal away the jewel of bhakti. Then there's that desire for sense gratification. They come like the armed robbers. In Montreal you have many bank robbers. Like that. Desire for sense gratification, fame, distinction. They'll come like bank robber and they steal your jewel of bhakti. Like this there are so many dangers. Desire to break the regulative principle like a lion, like a tiger will come and devour your heart, taking the jewel of bhakti and just drinking the blood, finishing. So one has to be very careful to protect the jewel. One should not think, oh, it was so easy, I became a devotee, now I can just uh, practice outside uh, of uh, devotional principles or I can somehow be happy outside of the shelter of my guru. Do not make such a mistake. This is a most rare opportunity. Do not let the jewel of your devotional service be stolen by Maya or her agents. Krishna Bahir Mukha Hoya Bhogavan Shakore Maya Nikustai Se Japatiya Dhore As soon as one turns his face away from Krishna, Maya tackles him, picks him up, throws him on the ground. Maya, she is the very good servant of Krishna. You know how when Lord Shiva 
When Lord Shiva was worshipping, in Koila suddenly started to laugh. And Mother Parvati was saying, What are you laughing about? What do you think? And he started to jump up and down. Jai Gauranga! Jai Gauranga! Jai Gauranga! 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 And Lord Shiva was in ecstasy, jumping and dancing. Seeing Nataraja dancing, Mother Parvati said, Who is this Gauranga? Simply to hear his name, my hairs are standing on end. Who is Gauranga? You don't know. Gauranga is the golden avatar of Krishna. He comes in Kali Yuga and he gives out pure prema to all the qualified and unqualified people. He is the ocean of mercy. Oh, Mother Parvati said, I want to see Gauranga. Where can I go to see Gauranga? I'm very anxious to have his holy darshan. Well, if you go to Navadip Dham, you can see Gauranga by worshipping there. Although he's not coming for many millions of years. So Mother Parvati immediately took leave from Lord Shiva and went to Navadip. There in the island of Srimantha Deep, she began to worship, constantly meditating upon Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, chanting his holy name, Gauranga, Gauranga, Jai, Gauranga, Jai, Gauranga, Jai, Sachi Sutta, Sachi Nandana, Jai, Gauranga, Jai, Gauranga, chanting his name and meditating upon him. Finally, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to her. Hari Bo, Hari Bo! She fell down on the ground, paid her obeisances there, the beautiful form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How his hair tied up in a bunch with a flower and his lotus eyes and a long garland with bumblebees flying all around and his long beautiful arms and thin waist surrounded by his associates. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the ocean of mercy, the embodiment of transcendental beauty and devotion was present. Mother Parvati fell down again and again at his lotus feet. She said, Hey, Gorango, Oh, my Lord, Gorango, the golden Lord, the golden incarnation, please have your mercy upon me. You are giving out your mercy to all of the fallen souls. You are giving out your mercy to everyone without considering their qualification. You are so kind, you are so merciful. I am your eternal maid servant. You have engaged me in the engagement of taking the living entity and keeping them in maya, keeping them in illusion. The great sages, they say, Krishna surja sama maya hoyandakar jaha krishna taha maya nahi adhikar. Wherever there is Krishna, there is no maya. Just like wherever there is sun, there is no darkness. So does that mean eternally I am kept away from your devotional service? I am kept away from your mercy? Oh Lord, please have your mercy upon me. When will I get pure love for your lotus feet? And she was crying. And she fell, and she touched the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and put on her head the dust. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu blessed her and said that, Do not be agitated. You should know that my internal potency, Allah Hadini Shakti Radha, she is the original cause of your existence. You are the expansion of the expansion of her only. You are her external energy. It is necessary that you be present for me to relish my transcendental pastimes. So this is also your service. So you should not be in anxiety. You are non-different energy from Srimati Radharani. So here in Navadip Dham, you will assume the form of Protamaya. The yoga maya, which protects the holy dham from the non-devotees and protects the devotees. And in Vrindavana, you will be Purnavasi, my yoga maya expansion. So, in this ecstatic service here at the dham, you will be able to relish 
that pure devotional mood. In this way he blessed her and he disappeared. So, Mother Parvati was able to understand at that moment, by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what is the mood of Srimati Radharani's devotion. And she tasted the ecstatic love for Godhead. And even today, Mother Durga, Parvati is in Mayapur Dham as Protamaya. And she deludes the eyes of the non-devotees. And she opens the eyes of the devotees to devotional service to Gauranga. So Mother Parvati, she's a very good devotee. If someone tries to enjoy this material world, she makes them forget about Krishna. But if someone tries to be Krishna conscious by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, his representative, by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his empowered devotees, one can have their eyes open and be free from the illusion spread by Mother Parvati, by Durga Devi. Don't miss this chance to have your eyes open and keep them open. Chant always, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adayeta Gadar Haro Sri Vasari Gauru Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare and induce others to chant and make their lives perfect. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? If one unjustly criticizes the devotee, he has to uh, get forgiveness from that devotee or touch that devotee's lotus feet. If he touches his feet, then that can forgive him of all the offense. Apart from that, by worshipping Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and feeling repentful, repentful or sorry for what he has done, one can also overcome offenses. There's no loss or diminution in devotional service. The only way to avoid offenses, or to overcome offenses, uh, is by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If one falls down into other type of offenses, the only hope is to serve Krishna. Again, restart the service. But for offenses, uh, one should try to get forgiveness from those who he has offended, otherwise touch their feet, otherwise simply pray to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Tulsi Devi, uh, other such great devotees of the Lord, for being forgiven from these offenses. Other questions? Association with uh, devotees is very rare. So whenever it's available, one should take advantage. That, one can only pray to Krishna and Lord Chaitanya for more association. Even if people try to chase after association, There we see that sometimes they end up committing offenses. So, the association of devotees is something which is given by the Lord. It is a rare opportunity. So one should take advantage of whatever association one gets and should be always anxious and pray to the Lord for the service and association of his devotees.
And by serving the spiritual master, by remembering the words of the uh, pure devotees, that will give one association with them. Uh, and that is a higher principle. Association through union and association through separation. One should practice both of these programs. Sometimes someone in separation is more intimately united than someone. Someone who is in real separation is most intimately united. Sometimes people, even when they are physically present with a pure devotee, they fall asleep or they think of something else, their mind wanders off. So in this way, uh, instead of being mentally present, they are not present. Uh, while the other person may be physically absent, but he is mentally and spiritually present. So when one has the physical presence of a pure devotee, then he should be very careful to be conscious, to be aware, to take advantage, so that when in the physical absence, one can also have the mind there fixed in separation. Understood? Any more questions? Yes. It says Maya in the Holy Dawn, she covers the Dawn with a thin snake caught by Maya, with a thin coating. And the non-devotees who live in the Dham but have not accepted their relationship with Lord Chaitanya. Uh, they are not living actually in the Dham. So why not in the temple? If someone is in the temple but one's mind uh, is always outside the temple. Or if one has not accepted in his heart the spiritual master in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, then actually that person will be covered by Maya. But this is very rare. But one therefore should not be proud. One has to be always humble. Just because someone is living in the temple does not mean that one is Krishna conscious. One is Krishna consciousness if one is living in the temple physically, mentally, and spiritually. So that is possible by being humble, by respecting other Vaishnavas, and not wanting respect for oneself, by being, pay, being humble like more than a straw in the street, and being more tolerant than the tree. Someone gets their Brahmin underwear stolen and he thinks that, oh, all the Vaishnavas are dogs or something like that. You know, it says some offense. Just because of, he may even have misplaced it, you know, but immediately he'll criticize. And even if someone took, all right, so what? Get another one. Get a box. Lock it up. Something. Someone is serving, uh, may have a bad habit. There's a story about one time there was uh, so many saints, you probably heard this, so many devotees in the temple. And they'd wake up and every day they would find all their bedding mixed up. And then they said, how is this? And so one time one devotee said, actually I was a night housebreaker before I became a devotee, a robber. 
So this is my habit in the night to steal something. So I, I, if I don't steal something, I can't sleep. So I take all your things and move them from here to there very secretly when you, and without waking you up. And this is able to, you see, get rid of my habit. You see, so sometimes someone may have even a bad habit. But still we shouldn't condemn if they're trying to serve Krishna. You see. So that means you have to be tolerant. One has to be tolerant. And of course, one should not try, that doesn't give an excuse that, oh, I had a bad habit before, so let me do it in the temple. That, of course, is a temporary status which should be eradicated. But there might be some bad habit, but that should be avoided. And if someone sees, they should try to help the person. Or they should just, if they're not in a position to help the person, uh, then they at least should not themselves become uh, agitated or disgusted with devotional service. They should be disgusted with maya. That maya is so strong that if one, you see, by being in this material world, even coming in the temple, there might still be some trace. Uh, therefore, one has to be determined to get rid of the maya, to become pure. So in living in the temple, one has to also bring in the mind, bring in the consciousness, and put those in the temple. Then one gets the full benefit. One has to accept the relationship. I am servant of Guru and Gorango. And with that relationship, one lives in the temple, one lives in the Dham, it gets a full effect. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.